Hey there, in this lesson we're going to continue our discussion on filtering using SQL. We looked at the WHERE clause as well as the AND clause. We're going to continue that discussion and talk about operators. Okay, Operators are used to compare uh, one column with another or s some data attribute. In the previous lesson, you've actually already used an operator. The first condition, the first filter condition in a query uh, is applied using the WHERE clause. And all of the other conditions after that are applied uh, using the AND clause. And we saw that we could compare the value in a particular column for a record with something else using the equal sign. Right. So if we want to, for example, get all of the employees that are managers, we can uh, have the WHERE job is equal to manager. and only those records will be returned that have the job manager, right? So this equal sign is an operator, and we're going to see some more operators in this lesson, such as the less than, greater than or equal to, greater than, uh, not equal to, and so on. And if you're not already familiar with these operators, don't worry, we're going to go into plenty of detail in this lesson for each one of these, and we'll have some puzzles for you to get practice. So let's go over some examples. I'm on the apex.oracle.com website. Let's sign in here. And uh, if you've saved your credentials before, they should already be populated here. Just click on the sign in button. And here we are. Now let's go to SQL Workshop as we've been doing, and then SQL Commands. Let's go over the first example for this lesson. And I'm going to start to focus on syntax a little bit. So instead of having my selects and froms and wheres in lowercase or capital, I'm going to try to keep it consistent. It's legal to make this lowercase as well. You know, I can do it like that too, but it just looks nicer if I can put these in, uh, in uppercase and hopefully it'll be easier for you to see on the screen as well. So let's select from emp and let's do a quick review of how this table looked. I've increased the font size a bit so that hopefully it's easier for you to read this. So uh, this is the data. Now if I do a filter condition, if I do where where uh, job is equal to uh, salesman, for example. Notice that I'm putting these quotes here. Right? These are very important. When we're doing string comparisons, we need to have these quotes. These are necessary in SQL. So uh, this is a string that we're searching for, salesman. And then just hit run, and this will give us all of the salesmen. All right. Now there is a special operator in SQL called the not operator. All right. And that looks like this, this exclamation point right here. And if we add this to the beginning of this uh, equal sign right here, this would be read as where job is not equal to salesman. So it would return everything other than salesman. Okay, so let's highlight this and hit run. And notice that we got all the records except for those employees that were salesmen. All right, so this is another uh, thing to keep in mind. We have equals and we have not equals. Now let me show you an example where it's a poorly written query with incorrect logic. So we can say sale, select star from emp where job is not equal to salesman. Let's say we forgot to change that and we add another clause here saying and job is equal to salesman. All right, what do you think is going to happen? When I select this and hit run, what do you think is going to happen? Notice that I have job is not equal to salesman, right? And then I'm saying, well, that job should be salesman. So this is completely inaccurate. If I highlight this and run, it's not going to give me any data. But notice that this is not a syntax error. The SQL interpreter has no problem with parsing this, but it's just incorrect logic. Um, you can't have a job that is not a salesman and then have a job that is a salesman for the same record, right? Because remember, we're talking about at the record level. So if I do where job is equal to salesman like this and hit run, um, you know, Alan is a salesman, Ward is a salesman, Martin is a salesman, Turner is a, is a salesman. So this condition right here is being applied at the record level, okay? If this was an obvious uh, up until this point, I'm, I just want to be clear about it, that this condition is being applied at the record level, 
okay because what's being returned are these records right and for every single record we are checking for certain conditions so i can have select star from amp where job is equal to salesman and um, sal you know salary is equal to 1500 okay so up to this point up to this point the first two lines is going to return all of the records but then when we add this condition right here then we're narrowing down the result set to just this record. So this is the only thing that will be returned. So let's highlight that and hit run. And notice only Turner with the salary of 1500 got returned. And he's, of course, a salesman. Okay. So just a few things to keep in mind, the conditions, these where's and ands, as well as some other things you'll see, they are being, everything is being applied at the record level. Every record is being checked based on these conditions. If it matches these conditions, then the SQL interpreter returns that. Otherwise, the records that don't match are excluded from the result set. This is the essence of the where and and clauses, as well as SQL querying in general. Let's go over another example. Let me get rid of this salary and uh, have a not salesman. So we get, we get all of the records that are not salesmen. And then I add a condition, and sell is uh, less than 2,500. Okay? So take a look at this data. What do you think will be returned? Which records here uh, will be returned based on this query? By the way, this is a new operator that we're seeing here. This is the less than operator where we're saying salary is less than the number 2,500. This is just a mathematical operator similar to what we've seen, like the equal sign and not equal. This is another operator that is used to compare elements. And the thing that's to the left, where the angle is closed, that's considered the smaller element. And the element that goes to the right, where the angle is open, right, the angle is um, large, or so to speak, uh, that side is going to have a larger element. Now, this operator could be flipped the other way around. All right, where the open side is pointing to the left and the closed side is pointing to the right. So the closed side always points to the smaller element, right? And the larger side points to the larger element, right? Um, and the way I think about this is, think of it as an open mouth, okay? When I'm hungry, I want to um, eat large things, okay? This is just a way for me to think about this and remember. I know it's a silly example, but maybe you can use the same example to remind yourself which side is supposed to be the larger one and which side is supposed to be the smaller one. The open wide mouth side is going to be, uh, is going to contain the, the, the larger data and the smaller side where the closed angle is going to be pointing to the smaller uh, number or, or element or whatever. And this is used as a comparison operator to filter the result sets. So any record that meets this criteria, right? For example, we had where salary is less than 2,500. Any record that meets that particular criteria, uh, that data will be returned. And anything that does not meet that criteria, those records will not be returned. So in this case, we're comparing where salary is less than 2,500. And notice that this is, since this is a number, we don't wrap it in quotations like we did with strings. Salesman is a word. It's an English word, or, you know, a set of characters uh, that cannot be computed or mathematically, you know, tabulated. These are just strings. So we wrap them in quotes. But this number is not a string. It's an actual number and we're comparing. So look at the data and think about what records are going to be returned. I'm about to run this query. So let's hit the run button and notice that we get uh, these uh, five or so records, okay? Um, for all of these records, right, there are not salesmen. None of these records are salesmen. And, and their salary is less than 2,500. Now, I can also have, you know, less than 3,000. And let's see if we have any other, uh, any more records come up. Maybe there's people with salary of 27 or 2800 i don't remember from the data let's let's select this and hit run i notice that yes we do get some salaries that are greater uh than 2500 and those are you know this 2850 2975 you know these are all these are all less than 3000 
So let's select this first part of the query again, right? Not the not this and condition, just the first two uh, statements there. Hit run, and we get all of the data that is not salesman. So I noticed that there is salaries of three thousand. Um, you know, there's two people with salaries of three thousand. So when I run this, those three thousand are not going to come up. The reason is. I'm saying and salary is less than 3000. I'm not saying where salary is less than or equal to, right? I'm not saying where salary is equal to. I'm saying where salary is less than 3000. That's why those 3000 didn't come up. So now if we do want them to come up along with all of these, what we would have to do is we would need a less than and equal to sign, okay? That's what it's pronounced. Less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Salary is less than or equal to 3,000. So, uh, so far, these records are all less than 3,000. Uh, so my attempt here is to, to get those other 3,000 uh, salaries in here. So let's select this and hit the Run button. And uh, we should see these two records pop up. And yes, we do here. Scott and Ford, they're both analysts, and they do have a salary of 3,000. Okay? And we still get all the other, all the other records that were less than uh, 3,000. Now the next thing we could try is we could do where salary is greater than 3,000. And there's going to be a lot less records, I think. Um, so let's select this and hit run. And yes, there's only a single person that has, that has a salary greater than 3,000. And it fits this criteria, right? This, his job is not a salesman. He's not a salesman. He's the president. And his salary is greater than three thousand. It's actually five thousand. So now it's time for a pop quiz. I want you to write a query that returns those employees whose commission is greater than their salary. All right. So um, and let's let's actually identify those first. Whenever I give you a problem, you first want to look at the data and identify the what the expected result. So let's run this query just to get the entire results at all of the data. And again, the question was, give me all of those employees whose commission is greater than their salary. So here, for the most part, a lot of the employees are not getting any commission. And in the, in the cases that they do get a commission, right, this is the commission column, the salary is generally higher. But there is this one instance, right, this one instance right here where Martin... He's a superstar salesman, and his salary is actually less than the commission he's making. Okay, so again, this is the commission column, and this is the salary column. Return me those employees that have a commission greater than salary. So I only expect, um, well, actually, only ten rows are being shown here. So let's go to fifteen. Uh, I know that there's a maximum of fourteen records in this table already. So let's run this, and this will return all. The records, all right? 14 rows returned. And let's see if there's anybody else that is making more commission than their salary. And it looks like it looks like Martin is the only one in that position, right? He's a superstar salesman. So that's the assignment. Write the query that returns those employees whose commission is actually higher than their salary. So you should pause the video now, try that out on your own, and when you're done, resume to watch my solution. All right, hopefully you took a shot at completing that. So we're going to get all of the employees from uh, this table, and we're only going to have one filter, right? One where clause, and that is where the commission is greater than the salary, like that. Hit run, and uh, notice that we do, in fact, get Martin. He's the only one that had a commission greater than the salary. Now, you could have also done it like this. You could have done where salary right, where salary is less than the commission. And this would give you the same exact result, right? So now I want to give you a slightly more complex problem to work on. And this is very important. You have to practice with SQL or any programming language. You have to practice. That's the only way 
you're going to learn this stuff. And this assignment, or this problem rather, is I want you to return me those employees that are not managers and have a salary greater than 2500 and that work in department number 20. Okay, so again, this is the department number. Uh, the records that are going to be returned, they're going to have the number 20 in those records, right? I want those employees that work in department number 20, and uh, they can't be managers, right? And their salary must be greater than 2500 So give it a shot, pause the video, and when you're done, you can resume to watch my solution. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you tried that assignment out. If it was challenging, don't worry. Uh, you're going to get plenty more practice, and the more practice you get at this, at writing these SQL queries, the better you're going to get, and the more fun you're going to have. So what was the assignment again? I'm going to see those employees that are not managers and have a salary greater than 2500 and also happen to work in the department number 20. So we can start by first um, running this bare bones select statement against the employee table to see the actual data okay and i've limited the rows to i've increased it to 15 uh, this table only has 14 rows so we are seeing the entire set of records here the, the all of the data so first let's figure out those employees that are not managers so it's anything but these guys right all of these other guys are going to be relevant here the presidents analysts clerks salesmen uh, not the managers, all right? So in our query is going to exclude these guys, and we're going to need the uh, the salary to be greater than 2,500. So let's first filter out those employees that are managers. So we can do where uh, job is not equal to manager, like that. Now we get all of the president and analyst and clerk, and now we want to filter by another criteria, the salary must be greater than 2500 so this record right here does not qualify this record here does not qualify you know basically a lot of these records here do not qualify 1600 1200 1250 the salary's got to be greater than 2500 so let's enter that condition and uh, we'll see the results set drastically reduce and this is going to be an and sal is greater than 25 100 like that so hit run again and we see a lot less record now good and the last condition required was they had to be in department number 20 all right so the query that you write would have returned only these two records these are the only two that, that have a salary greater than 2500 that are not managers and have a department number 20 so let's add that final condition and depth number is equal to 20 and hit run there we go so this is the solution here it's it's legal to also do this instead of having salary greater than 2500 you can do where 2500 is less than salary like this All right this is also correct uh, but it's not best practice okay when uh, when you're having these where clauses and ands and and you'll see ors and so on you always want to have the, the, the columns closer to these uh, keywords, such as the where and the and and so on. When we start having these numbers in random places, it gets kind of tricky. So just to prove that it works, I'm going to run this and notice that it still returns the same data, but this is really not best practice. So you want to have sal first, right, um, closer to the keyword, because that is a column. And the thing that we're comparing against the number or the, the string and so on should be on the other side of the operator. Okay. And by the way, these are referred to as operators. This equal sign is an operator. This greater than, uh, equal to, less than, and so on. These are all operators. And they're used to compare one thing with another. All right. And these are, uh, you know, throughout mathematics, you'll see these. And if you've, you haven't seen them before, that's fine. You can study them up, memorize them. Take a moment to, to just digest this information if this is the first time you're seeing it. And we're going to be seeing a lot of queries that involve these operators throughout the course. So let's wrap it up here. This lesson is already quite long. I'll see you in the next lesson.